Welcome everyone for the OSPOCON and my session Choose Your Own Kubernetes for the local development. Um, I'm Karthik Ayan, Karthik Ayan Govindiraj. I'm an open source enthusiast. Um, I write medium blogs and I'm a sensitive speaker. At work, I'm a developer evangelist at BlackRock and you can know more about me on my uh, bio links, G Karthik. So that's my QR code for my bio link. I'm very active on my Twitter. Uh, you can follow me or ask questions on Twitter. If you cannot ask here, it doesn't need to stop there. Um, with that, uh, I would like to introduce a few concepts before we are diving into our different local Kubernetes clusters. Uh, at a high level, uh, a cluster is a group of two or more computers or nodes that run uh, together to achieve a common goal. Uh, with that definition, if you look at single node cluster, it's an irony. A single node cannot be forming a cluster, but uh, what it means in a Kubernetes way is like uh, Kubernetes has multiple components attached to it. Uh, those are like API server, HCD, scheduler, and the controller, etc. So a single instance of a machine which uh, comprises of all these services to form and to provide a complete Kubernetes service uh, is called a single node cluster. Uh, and the next one is the multi-node cluster, highly available for the deployed service. A cluster which has multiple worker nodes and available for the deployment of uh, different workloads. Uh, that is called a multi-node cluster. So for example, when you deploy a web application and if you want to deploy three instances of a web application, you would schedule to get deployed in three different worker nodes. Uh, if there is an infrastructure failure and if one of the worker node fails, uh, so the rest of the two worker nodes having your web application would continue to serve your request. Uh, so you would achieve high availability uh, for your web application. But uh, this high availability is not available for the control plane because still the cluster uh, is having only one control plane uh, node. So the next one is the high available control plane cluster. Uh, these are uh, highly available control planes. Uh, for example, you will have three different uh, worker nodes and three different uh, control planes. Uh, this is because uh, almost all the CNCF certified Kubernetes distribution uses HCD. HCD uses raft protocol and HCD runs uh, in the master uh, node. That, that's a control plane node, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, that is where uh, all your data, all your state of the resources are stored. So uh, for the raft protocol, you need to have odd number of instances to elect a leader and uh, to uh, get a followers uh, to make a consensus. Because of that, we will have uh, odd number of control planes and any number of worker nodes. So with that, we will get uh, the control plane high availability, which is for the Kubernetes cluster by itself, and high, high availability uh, by uh, multiple worker nodes for uh, the deployed services as well. So this is how that means look at uh, the control, uh, Kubernetes cluster, whether uh, if the control plane is always available, uh, if there are, uh, whether the cluster has more than one uh, nodes for workloads and workloads are spread across evenly, etc., etc. So but that the first local Kubernetes cluster we're going to see at micro -KH. micro -KH is from uh, this canonical kind of bundle folks. micro -KH is a simple binary. You can download it from their website. And uh, you can actually create a single or multi-node cluster using micro -KH. Uh, The additional advantage of using micro -KH as the local cluster is uh, it has an add-on called registry. And that is an inbuilt container registry for um, your uh, container images. Uh, to start using uh, Kubernetes from micro -KH, all you have to do is like uh, just download the micro -KH binary, execute micro -KH install. Upon executing that particular command, uh, you would actually, uh, you are actually creating the Kubernetes cluster and starting the Kubernetes cluster under the hood. Uh, when you execute wait ready uh, flag along with the status of the micro -KH command, you would actually see uh, uh, status of whether it is running or, uh, or not, and whether it is highly available or not, and then, uh, additional add-ons that are enabled and the possible add-ons that you can actually enable that are currently disabled. Um, so another thing is like micro -KH also have a subcommand called kube control, though that's exact uh, functionality of the kube control. Uh, it behaves as exactly how our local kube control CLI works. Uh, so when you want to execute kube control get pods or when you want to uh, get all the resources from all the namespaces, uh, you, you got to execute micro -KH, kube control get all, uh, all the namespaces. Uh, so this is like kind of clumsy. All, you, all the time you have to actually execute micro -KH kube control. So this is how I do. I actually alias kube control as micro -KH kube control, and I'll just uh, do kube control get all. Uh, so that behaves exactly like how our local uh, kube control command works. So 
that's a single node uh, Kubernetes cluster by MicroCades. Now, how do we create a high available MicroCades uh, Kubernetes cluster? So uh, this this can be so when when it comes with high availability, as we discussed earlier, like we need multiple machines or multiple nodes. Since we are running in a single uh, development machine or a laptop or desktop, uh, we need multiple machines. In a sense, like we are going to create multiple virtual machines. You can use any uh, tools to uh, manage or create virtual machines like VirtualBox, Multipass, Vagrant, etc. So I use Multipass here. Multipass is another tool from Canonical folks. Uh, this uses Hypervisor, Hyperkit Hyper as the local driver uh, or the VirtualBox if the, uh, VirtualBox is available if you want to enable that. Uh, from your uh, local machine uh, all you have to do is like uh, you have you got to say like multipass launch and then the name of the virtual machine that you wanted to do and then the memory needs to get allocated uh, the disk storage space uh, though those are not mandatory but uh, i'm just providing it for the sake of uh, adding the memory uh, statically so with that i'm creating a couple of another uh, machines as well micro k 0 to micro k 0 3 with the same memory on the disk space uh, once uh, it is launched uh, when i execute multipass list you will see the name of the machine state of the machine and then the ip address attached to it and the image that's been used for creating that virtual machine so uh, with that uh, what we're gonna do so the first thing we have to do is like uh, we have the virtual machines in place, but there is no uh, microcades installed into it. So the first thing you have to do is like install microcades into the machine. So you gotta designate one among those three as the control plane, and then you gotta exec into it. Like as in multipass shell, the control plane VM name would actually get your uh, terminal into the machine. And then using the snap package manager, you can install microcades into that VM. Once you uh, install that, uh, the next thing you have to do is like uh, you have to create uh, the token for joining the cluster. So microcades has another subcommand called add node. Um, so the output of the add node will be like uh, a command that's uh, spit out by that particular command saying like microcades join, IP address, port number, and a token. So let's see what uh, happens when you execute add node. The moment when you execute microcades add node, this particular, uh, the particular machine that you are executing this command will be designated as uh, the control plane and it will enable the high availability there. And then it creates a join token. If you're not providing a token by yourself, it would automatically create a join token. And then when using that token in another machine, it's gonna uh, add that particular machine as the worker node into the cluster. So uh, that's how you actually create a, a highly available cluster. Now, so you got the highly available cluster. You might need to uh, add uh, the Kubernetes dashboard for your visualization aspect. You can do so by enabling it uh, by using microcades enable dashboard, uh, similarly how we do in Minikube. Uh, so now we got the microcades highly available cluster running in the virtual machine. So earlier we got that running in our local machine. So it was easy like to say alias a micro cage, cube control, but it is not now like that. So what we have to do is like, we have to get the cube config uh, of that particular uh, cluster that we are running in our virtual machine. To do so, you got to exec into the same um, control plane machine, and then you can uh, get the micro cage config. That is actually the cube config of the cluster. So use that cube config as the uh, cube config of your cube control uh, command CLI, and then you can directly interact from your local machine pointing to that cluster using this cube, con cube config. You can even um, run a cube, uh, cube control proxy using the cube config uh, that is obtained from the micro cage cluster. So with that, uh, the observation that we have for the micro cage is like, uh, we don't need any Docker to run uh, in our local. Uh, we can actually run this in any which, any uh, operating system like Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, it is not uh, something like, um, uh, operating system constraint. Uh, it does also have a built-in image registry that is helpful for pushing and pulling local images into the cluster immediately. Uh, so this is like kind of a single binary. It's easy for creating a single node cluster for CI/CD environments to do the testing or to do the integration testing, etc. Um, the microcades is a CNCF conformant cage distribution. Um, you can actually uh, create a Windows uh, worker machine as well, worker node as well, and attach to the cluster or worker node as a uh, windows machine as a single node cluster and you can deploy uh, windows containers as well micro cage supports uh, windows containers with that the next one uh, in our local uh, kubernetes uh, cluster is kind so uh, kind follows the concept of kubernetes in docker this is actually owned by our very own kubernetes folks developers the, by the sig uh, cage uh, sig kind 
So uh, you can create a single or multi-node cluster with kind as well. Uh, to start a kind cluster, you got to uh, download the binary kind and then uh, upon executing kind create cluster, of course, you got to have the Docker running in your Docker daemon running in your host machine because uh, this particular kind will create a Kubernetes cluster inside a Docker container. So upon executing that, kind will create a full blown Kubernetes cluster in a single Docker container with all the uh, necessary components of a Kubernetes and gives you the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the other feature of kind is like you can actually create a custom build of Kubernetes. For example, if you're working on a Kubernetes uh, patch or Kubernetes enhancement and you want to test out the but if particular patch is working uh, with the Kubernetes clusters uh, or if it is if the particular patch is behaving properly as expected, you can actually use kind to build the Kubernetes image and then run the built image locally uh, as a kind uh, Kubernetes cluster. To do so, you just got to do like Kubernetes build node image. If you're not providing or if your Kubernetes is uh, source code is in the proper go path it would automatically detect and it would automatically build the kubernetes image node image from that particular uh, source code and uh, the image that you built can be uh, added as a image flag uh, value uh, for the kind create cluster command and uh, obviously this this kind supports and runs across all the operating systems like linux mac os and windows uh, provided if the docker daemon is running in that uh, host machines um, there are additional flags as well. I forgot to mention there is like arc. Uh, so you use arc for building the Kubernetes node image uh, for different uh, architecture of the machines and etc. So the other advantage of kind is like you can actually have uh, your uh, locally built uh, Docker images to load into the Kubernetes cluster easily. So this uh, allows you to develop test and develop, deploy and test in a Kubernetes cluster immediately. For example, if you're de developing a Kubernetes native, uh, cloud native application or service, and you want to test it out uh, immediately, you can actually build it locally and then just load it, uh, load the image into the kind cluster and then uh, deploy it in the kind Kubernetes cluster, validate the behavior if it behaves as expected. Uh, so that is an, uh, that actually improves a lot of SDLC uh, timing perspective. So the next one is uh, kind actually supports configuration, the very famous YAML configuration files as well. Yes, it is YAML. Uh, so uh, with this YAML file, I can actually create a multiple complex uh, Kubernetes clusters as well. For example, uh, in the in the program on the on your left side, I am saying like uh, there are three control planes and I need three workers. And upon executing, upon applying that uh, configuration file, uh, I'm getting three different control planes uh, node and three different worker nodes as my Kubernetes cluster. And of course, all of these are running in a Docker container, but kind takes care of clustering everything all together by itself. There is no manual intervention needed to form a cluster. So uh, with that, uh, what is our observation on kind is like kind needs either Docker or Podman running on the host machine. Uh, this runs in across all the operating system, of course, uh, provided if the Docker daemon or Podman is running on the machine. Um, and you need uh, additional deployment for your container registries if you are in need of a container registry for in your local cluster. But I don't think you need it because you can just build it locally and uh, uh, like uh, load it into your cluster directly. Um, so I'm I'm a fan of very much a CI environment for this kind because uh, you can actually use kind to do the integration testing and um, in, in your CI environment and then you can actually clean up by just executing a command kind delete cluster and it's so fast because everything is within the container and you are not polluting anything uh, in your CI pipeline. Uh, so though kind is a CNCF conformant Kubernetes distribution, it does have few known limitations and one of the major limitations to be noted is uh, it doesn't support uh, Windows containers yet. Uh, so this is a, a kind of a drawback because this is definitely not uh, an orchestration tool for production grade. Uh, this is definitely for development environment. So with that, the next one you're going to see is like the K3S. Uh, K3S is from Rancher folks. Uh, this is a stripped down version of uh, the upstream Kubernetes uh, source code. So in this, uh, the biggest disadvantage is like it only works on Linux machine, uh, but for the Linux machine, we can use virtual machines in our local or the alternate method is like you can use K3D. So K3D is a wrapper uh, around K3S to run in a Docker container. 
So for virtual machines, again, you can use different virtual machine tools. I'm using Multipass here, the one which I used for the micro KH. I created a Multipass virtual machine and uh, all you have to do is like execute a curl command from the K3S uh, website that has like get K3S IO. And once you execute that, it automatically detects your architecture, OS, version and everything. And then it installs the Kubernetes cluster and starts the cluster as well. So that starts a single node uh, virtual cluster, uh, sorry, single node um, uh, Kubernetes cluster. And by default, K3S uh, installs the traffic as well. Uh, so now you got this K3S running, K3S Kubernetes cluster running in a virtual machine. Uh, to interact with that uh, from your local terminal, all you got to do is like you got to grip the version, uh, sorry, grip the K3S YAML, which is the kube config, and change the IP on, in that uh, kube config from the loopback address to the actual IP address of the virtual machine, and then feed that as a kube config to your kube control. And when you uh, execute kube control using the kube config, you, would, uh, you are actually interacting directly from your local machine to the Kubernetes cluster that is running inside the multipass uh, virtual machine as K3S cluster. Um, so with that, uh, we saw a single node K3S Kubernetes cluster. So K3S also does support uh, high availability. To do the high availability for K3S, uh, we got to have uh, multiple virtual machines. So once you create a multiple virtual machine, you got to designate one of the virtual machine as the control plane machine. And you, you're going to take the node token that is available under where lib rancher K3S server node token path. Uh, that's shown on the uh, on the screen and you also need to take the control planes ip address the machines uh, virtual machines ip address so you can actually use k3x prefixed uh, environment variable to use in the boot up uh, time or you can actually pass it as the pipeline argument as well so i used uh, both of them so i added the node token to k3s token uh, environment variable and i'm using k3s url as the piped uh, variable to pass the control planes ip address for the curl command that I'm using, that I've used for the previous machine. Uh, so when I execute this particular uh, command uh, in the new machine, in the new virtual machine, so this particular virtual machine will create the Kubernetes cluster, adds the token, uses the token, and uh, tries to get uh, added to the control plane as a worker node. So following this with uh, multiple worker nodes will create a single node, uh, a single control plane with multiple worker node Kubernetes cluster. So with that, uh, we have created multiple uh, highly available cluster. Now, that is with virtual machine. The alternate option for that is uh, to run with K3D. So K3D is an alternative to VM installation for K3S. So according to the Rancher folks, this is uh, also from Rancher folks. And according to Rancher folks, it's a lightweight wrapper uh, to run uh, K3S in Docker. Um, every every uh, single configuration works exactly as uh, how K3S works. Um, there is one additional advantage using K3S, like how uh, we saw in our previous uh, uh, previous kind, K3D also does auto clustering. So when I specify what is my uh, cluster machine numbers, like say in this example, I've said uh, server as three. So the K3D will automatically create three different servers and automatically connects them as a cluster and gives us a full blown Kubernetes cluster. So if you look at the resultant of that out output, uh, you would actually see three different um, uh, servers for my uh, Kubernetes cluster having control plane, etcd, and master roles. And additional advantage of K3D is like, you don't need to uh, deploy a, a container registry by yourself because by adding the flag registry create, it will automatically create a local registry within the cluster as well. So that's an advantage in K3D in compared to native K3S. So uh, with that, uh, in K3S, uh, the observations are, it works only with Linux distributions, maybe Windows, and it needs a virtual machine management tool like Multipass or Vagrant uh, for local environment, for local desktop machines to uh, manage the virtual machines. Um, an alternate option to that is like we can run K3D, but if you're running with K3D, you need to have the Docker on your host because K3D runs K3S inside a Docker container and if you are in need of uh, a docker registry for your uh, a container registry for your local cluster you got to deploy it by yourself when you're using a native k3s or uh, you can create it with uh, the registry create flag in your k3d so that's uh, the k3s observations and k3s is also a cncf conformance certified uh, distribution certified kubernetes distribution 
So these are the local Kubernetes cluster. The next one is the virtual cluster. Before diving into the virtual cluster, I want to introduce a few different uh, topics or I want to define a few different terminologies, uh, virtual cluster and host cluster. A virtual cluster uh, is defined as a complete Kubernetes cluster that is spun up inside an existing Kubernetes cluster. So you will have an existing Kubernetes cluster that is maintained by your infra people and you will have a namespace that you own. So what you would do is like you would actually deploy the virtual Kubernetes cluster in that namespace that you own and that would uh, give you a full blown complete Kubernetes cluster. And what is a host cluster? The cluster where you are deploying your virtual Kubernetes cluster is called your host cluster. And self-servicing Kubernetes cluster is nothing but uh, as a developer, you can actually log into the cluster, uh, sorry, log in and create your own Kubernetes cluster whenever it is needed uh, on demand. So that is called self-servicing Kubernetes cluster. It's, it's the general generic terminology. So with that, uh, we're going to look into the concept of V cluster. So uh, unlike uh, the previous local Kubernetes clusters, it doesn't create any cluster in a local machine. You will not have any local machine uh, running with a Kubernetes cluster. So these uh, clusters are created inside a running remote clusters that is already available to you. So this follows the concept of Kubernetes inside a Kubernetes. Uh, so developers works with the remote cluster uh, via a CLI, via a thin client CLI sort of something like that. Uh, and you can actually make developers the admin of your virtual cluster so that they can actually uh, test out all the features available in that particular uh, virtual cluster. So uh, typically when this comes with the CLI, the CLI works with almost all the OS. Uh, there is no OS constraints on this. It works with Mac, Mac Linux or Windows. Uh, and since these virtual clusters deploy the pure Kubernetes clusters by itself, uh, you need to, if you are in need of have, uh, in need of a container registry, you got to deploy your own container registry. And most of the time you would not be needing that because you would be using uh, the remote container registry as it is. Uh, and the next, uh, the most important thing is like when you are working with virtual cluster, all the namespaces and the resources that you have created within that virtual cluster are encapsulated within the host clusters namespace where the virtual cluster is running. So there would not be any leakage to the host cluster. So this actually provides an, so this particular virtual cluster provides an impartial cloud native developer experience across all the developers uh, using different operating systems and uh, different machines. Um, so the next one is like, do you need an admin permission to create a vCluster? Actually, no. Uh, probably you might need a admin permission for creating uh, CRDs and cluster role bindings when you are actually creating or deploying the virtual cluster, but not when you're creating a virtual cluster by itself. So, uh, from the host cluster perspective, if you look at that, there is a virtual cluster that is running within this namespace and except the scheduler, everything else will be available from the Kubernetes con uh, component perspective. Uh, instead of the scheduler, the virtual cluster has a component called syncer. The syncer will actually uh, get uh, the command of scheduling the pods and it will actually pass on to the corresponding uh, host cluster scheduler, attaching a few different, con a few different uh, constraints like this particular pod must be present with this namespace and etc something like that so with that uh, the observation of for us on the visual cluster is like uh, you mandatorily need a host cluster to deploy the virtual clusters and uh, this provides uh, the remote development environment or uh, remote development cluster experience for the developers so you got to deploy your own registry if you're in need of a registry because this just deploys a kubernetes by its uh, kubernetes nothing more than that it is a certified uh, CNCF conf uh, confirmant certified Kubernetes distribution as well. Um, main takeaway of virtual cluster is it provides an impartial cloud native developer experience for the developers who are using different OS like Mac, Windows and uh, Linux. Uh, maybe like in different machines as well like Mac, Windows, Linux and VDIs for example. Uh, VDIs are like uh, it's hard uh, to create, uh, I mean it is impossible to create a hypervisor or virtualization in VDIs and uh, if you are using a company provided laptop it is impossible to enable the hypervisor in Windows or something like that. So in that uh, cases uh, the virtual cluster are your uh, life savior. So that's all I had today for my choose your own Kubernetes for your local uh, development. With that, thank you so much. This is Karthik again, Karthik A and Govind Raj. You can follow me on Twitter at GKRTHACS. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be uh, on Slack and uh, you can ask me on Twitter as well. Thank you so much for the session. Thank you so much for watching.